Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be sewing. We're gonna be sewing along to the Sicily Slip Dress, which is a PDF pattern by Sewing Patterns by Mason. This is my second time making this dress and I love this one just as much as the first. In my previous video, I did a review of the first dress that I made. So I talked about sizing, I talked about the fabric that I used, and I also showed the inside construction of the garment. If you missed that video, you can check that one out here. I made view A on the dress again, and for fabric, I used this crinkle rayon that I purchased from my local Joann's a couple months ago. Well, this right here is the finished dress. Um, and I really did love the colors in this fabric. I'm a big fan of crinkle rayon. I've sewn with it before, I've made a couple garments and some videos here as well using the crinkle rayon um, but I really do like that texture that it has on it it's really nice lightweight drapey and flowy I will say with this make I did have to shorten my straps as opposed to the first garment I didn't have to make any adjustments and I also had to trim off a little more of the hem and again I just think that's because of this fabric it has a little bit more drape than the previous one that I used for sizing, I cut the size G and I did not make any adjustments to the pattern. So now if you want to sew and follow along with me to make the Sicily slip dress, go ahead and cut out your pattern, cut out your fabric, and let's get started. To get started sewing our Sicily slip dress, I have my instructions pulled up here right on my phone. And at step one, it says that we need to do some stay stitching around our pattern pieces. And the stay stitching will help it from stretching out as we're constructing the dress, since we did cut it on the bias. So for the stay stitching, we are going to be stay stitching 1 8 of a way from the raw edge. And I'm just gonna stay stitch along both of the sides as well as along the hem of the dress. And I'm gonna start stitching from the bottom all the way up to the top on both of the sides because again, I don't wanna start at the top and then accidentally stretch the fabric out going down. So I would rather start at the hem and stay stitch it going up. So I'm gonna do that for my back pattern piece as well as for the front. So let's head to the machine now and go ahead and do stay stitching along the sides and the lower edge of our dress at 1 8 of an inch. All right, so I have just done the stay stitching along both sides of my front and back, as well as along the hem. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish off the bottom edges of our facing. For our two facing pieces, this right here is the front and this is my back. We're gonna go to our serger, or if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. We're just gonna finish off the raw edge right here with either your serger or your zigzag stitch. And then we're going to fold that under to the wrong side and then we're gonna stitch it. So first, let's go ahead and do our serge to finish off the raw edge. After we have the raw edge of our facings finished, now we're just gonna fold them to the inside and give them a press. So I'm just folding over my serger stitch, the finished edge, and I'm pressing it in place. Now that we have pressed under the finished edge, whether you did a serger stitch or a zigzag stitch, you wanna go ahead and press that under. And now we can go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch this down at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and just do a straight stitch right here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance to finish off the facing edge. Now that we have finished off our facings, we can go ahead and put the facing for the back as well as the front piece to the side and start to work on our straps. So for the straps, we are going to fold them in half lengthwise like so. So fold your straps in half, go to the sewing machine and then we're going to stitch them down at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you want, you can pin it in place. I'm just gonna hold mine together as I am stitching it. And again, we're gonna be stitching at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead to the machine now and stitch both of our straps together. Because this is so thin, it's kind of tricky to sew, so just take your time. Thank you. 
After you have stitched your straps, you wanna go ahead and grab a loop turner. So I'm gonna be using this tool right here to turn the strap right side out. So I'm just gonna slide it on one end. I'm gonna hook it up here at the top and just bring it through. and turn it right side out. Before you turn it though with the loop turner, be sure to trim your seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch, and then you can go ahead and turn it right side out. And now you can go ahead and give your strap a press. After you have pressed it, you wanna go ahead and do the same thing to both straps, and now we can go ahead and attach them to the front. Now we're gonna take the front of our dress and what we're gonna do right here is our fold line. So when you fold down your facing, you're gonna be folding it down right here along the fold line. So right here, we're going to align our straps right here. We're gonna sandwich it in right here between these two layers, making sure that the raw edges are even. So I'm going to just open this out. I'm also gonna grab my pins. And I'm just going to line up my raw edge right here Again, so when this folds over, it's gonna be sandwiched right here along the fold line like so. So now that I have that there, and you wanna make sure that you have it right up against the raw edge in between the two layers, and then I'm gonna pin it in place like so. So again, for the other side here, go ahead and grab your strap. And I'm just gonna align it right here making sure that the raw edges are even. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. Now that we have that pin, we're gonna go ahead and continue pinning the armhole in place because we're gonna stitch at a 3 8 of an inch all the way along the armhole. So let's go ahead and pin all of this in place. Go ahead and pin your other side the same way. So now your front pattern piece should look like this. You should have folded your facing down so that the facing in the dress is right sides facing. And you should also have your ties sandwiched right here between your facing and your front fabric piece right at the fold line. So I have my two ties right here and I've also pinned along the arm hold. So now we can go ahead and stitch this at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that we have stitched our facing down, we're gonna go ahead and clip into our curves here and then do some understitching. So first I'm going to grab my shears here and I'm just going to put some clips into the curve. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. After you have trimmed and put some clips into your curve, now we can go ahead and do some understitching. So with understitching, you wanna make sure that your seam allowance is facing toward the facing. And then we're gonna to go to the machine and we're gonna stitch onto the facing, making sure that we catch the seam allowance. So we're not stitching onto the dress, only to the facing. Making sure you have your seam allowance facing toward the facing and we're just gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. So let's go ahead and do our understitching now as far as we can go. You probably won't be able to get all the way up here to the top, but let's just understitch as far as we can go. Now that you have your understitching, done and you can see here the understitching is along the facing not on the front you want to go ahead and pull your straps out and now we can put the front to the side and start to work on the back to begin working on our back i'm going to lay my back pattern piece right sides facing up and i'm going to grab my back facing and i'm going to lay it down so that it is right sides facing to the back and i'm going to start pinning just to kind of hold the facing in place so I'm just gonna pin right here around the arms. I'm not gonna pin up here at the top. So I'm just gonna pin around, matching up the notches. Now, 
Now that I have some of this pin, again, I did not pin it up here at the top where the straps will go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my front piece now. So here is the front of my dress here and I am laying it right sides facing. I'm going to take my ties, I'm gonna make sure that they are not twisted and I'm going to pull them under the back facing up through the top, matching up the raw edges and then I'm gonna pin them in place. Same thing to the other side, making sure that you have your front and back right sides facing, make sure that your straps are not twisted, and I'm just going to slide them under the facing, matching them up to the raw edge up here at the top. From here, you can go ahead and add more pins if you like. So now that we have our straps pinned, now we can go ahead and stitch this at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that we have stitched right here along our back facing at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna do the same thing that we did to our front facing. So you wanna go ahead and trim down your seam allowance and then clip into your curves and then do some understitching. So let's go ahead and do all those steps now. All right, now that we have finished off our back facing, so I trimmed down that seam allowance, I clipped into my curves, and then I also did my understitching as far as I could go. So I have some understitching here, around the center and also along this armhole here I have some understitching on the back facing. So now we're going to go ahead and start working on our side seams and for the side seams if you are following along with the steps for the pattern that is on page 15 is when we start with the side mm -hmm. seams and we're going to be doing a French seam. So for the French seams instead of sewing with your fabric right sides facing we're going to sew with the fabric wrong sides facing. So here are my side seams right here. I'm going to grab some pins and I'm going to start matching up my notches along my side seams and I'm going to pin in place. I'm also going to match up the facing and again it's with wrong sides facing. We are doing a French seam for the side seam of this dress. Depending on the type of fabric that you're using, you may want to use more pins, especially if you have like a silky satin. Again, I'm using a rayon chalet for this project. I'm gonna go ahead and pin down the other side seam the same way, wrong sides facing, and then we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna stitch using a narrow zigzag stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. After you have your side seam sewn, so I've just sewn both the side seams again with the wrong sides facing at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now we're going to trim our seam just a little to about, to about an eighth of an inch. Um, so I'm trimming very little off. Okay, I'm going to trim the other side the same way. Now that we have trimmed down our side seams, now we're going to turn our dress right sides facing. So now I'm going to turn it right sides facing. 
I'm going to take this to the ironing board and I'm going to press my seam so that it is nice and flat. I'm going to do that all the way down both side seams because after we have it pressed, then we have to go back to the machine and we're gonna stitch again at a quarter of an inch and then our raw edge will be encased in that seam. So I'm gonna go to the ironing board now and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press. Okay, I've just finished pressing my side seams. I have them nice and flat. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a zigzag stitch. I still have it set at my narrow zigzag stitch and I'm gonna stitch again along the sides at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. After we have sewn our side seams, you wanna go ahead and turn your dress right size out so I'm just gonna flip everything right side out and I'm gonna take a look at my side seams because you wanna make sure that you don't have any fabric peeking out or any fraying happening. You want to make sure that you really did encase all of your raw seam allowance and that you have a really nice, beautiful, clean seam. So this is the right side of the fabric and on the inside we have a really nice, beautiful French seam. All right, now that you have pressed your side seams and when you press them, you wanna press them going toward the back. And then you also want to press your facings toward the inside of the garment. So here's my facing right here and I've pressed it toward the inside. Next, you wanna go ahead and grab a needle and thread and go ahead and tack down your facing so that it stays toward the inside and while you're wearing it, it's not rolling out. So just grab a needle and thread and you just want to tack it. You can tack the front seams together right here along the side seams just to keep your facing in place. The next thing after you have tacked down your facing is to let your dress hang for at least 24 hours. I am not going to hem my dress right now. I'm going to place it on my mannequin and I'm just gonna let it hang 24 hours. This will allow our hem to drop and settle in because if we were to hem our dress right now since it has been cut on the bias, then we will have a cricket hem. So it's important to just let your hem hang and drop overnight. If you do not have a mannequin, you can grab a hanger and just place it on the hanger, hang it over a door and just let your dress hang for again at least 24 hours. All right, so it's been 24 hours that I have allowed my dress to sit here and hang on my mannequin. And so now I'm gonna get ready to hem it. And you can see that my hem is no longer leveled. You can see it's a little higher on this side and it's kind of dropped um, throughout the rest of the hem. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and even this off before I hem it. And so what I like to do is use my yardstick right here and I just measure up directly from the ground straight up. So I just have this on the ground. And so I'm gonna use that as a guide as I go all the way along the hem of my dress and I'm just going to mark up my hem to even it off. So this right here, the shortest part is at 21. So I'm just gonna use 21 as a guide to go all the way along the hem. Since again, this portion right here is the shortest part and it's measuring right at 21 inches. So I'm gonna have the rest of it match up to 21 inches. All right, so I've just pinned around, and again, I used 21 inches as a guide since I started out right here and it's close to 21. So I just went all the way along the hem, making sure I keep my ruler flat on the ground, and I wasn't pulling my dress down. I was just going all the way around, measuring at 21, and just marking it with pins. You can also mark it with a marking tool, like a marker or some chalk if you have that. All right, now that I have marked and even and leveled off my hem, I'm gonna go ahead and trim right here at the pin. So I'm gonna take it off the dress form. If you want, you can just grab your shears and you can just trim right here. But I like to take mine off the dress form, that way I can have it nice and flat 
and just trim around it to get it even. And then after I have trimmed it and I have it all even, then I can go ahead and hem my dress. I'm gonna hem it using a really narrow double fold. If you have a rolled hem foot, you can pop that onto your machine and do a really pretty rolled hem as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I will be finished with my dress. Well, that is all for the video. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you do not miss when the next video goes live. I'll see you all then. Blessings, everyone. Bye.